Dateline with Jane Pauley and Stone Phillips, plus Tom Brokaw, Katie Curry, and Maria Shriver. From Studio 3B in Rockefeller Center, here is Stone Phillips. Good evening. We begin tonight with a question that can touch a nerve. Are you prejudiced? Many people would answer no. But how many people would be willing to take a test to prove it? You're going to get a chance to do that tonight. But first, you'll see two groups of people, black and white, take that same scientific test. Some of what they learned surprised them. What will you learn about yourself when you take the test? Here's Sarah James with a Dateline Discovery Channel exclusive. Police do say the four officers unloaded 41 rounds inside this vestibule and Diallo was killed. An unarmed black man killed in a hail of 41 bullets by four white New York City police officers. What happened to Amadou Diallo led to a high profile New York trial. Not guilty. An explosive verdict. Was your verdict unanimous? Yes. And endless debate. Some thought the verdict was just. The guy was shot because the officers thought he had a gun. Others, just an outrage. An unarmed man, no police record, nothing! Same verdict, opposite reactions. Why is it that we often see the same thing so differently when race is a factor? You may be saying, not me, I'm not prejudiced. But is it possible that virtually all of us have a hidden racial bias hidden even from ourselves. That's exactly what this test is designed to uncover. Here's how it works. These words and faces appear rapidly, one after another, around the screen. The test taker is supposed to link each one to the left or right box here in the center, linking positive words like friend to good, negative words like awful to bad, white faces with white, black faces with black. And it's the mistakes that are so revealing. We find that frequently. Some people are disturbed by their results. Ready? Go. Dateline put this experiment to a difficult challenge, testing a cross-section of men and women, including some who have impeccable credentials in race relations. People like Rhonda, a civil rights attorney. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, here it is. During the first half left, of the test, right, black right, is linked to left, bad and left, white is linked left, to good. Right. For left, Rhonda, left, this half of the left, test is a breeze. Right, she right, never makes right, a mistake. Left. Okay, very good. Now, we'll give you the other one. Okay. But let's see how she does when the information is reversed. When the left box, marked bad, has a white face and the right box, labeled good, has a black face. Left, left. Suddenly right, the test right, becomes much more right, difficult left, for Rhonda. About a third left, of the way through, right, she makes right. a mistake, linking the white face to the right box, even though that shows a black face. <laughs> I lost it. Okay. <laughs> Rhonda's score indicates a strong okay. preference for white. Is. is this because she unconsciously associates white with good? Well, I could tell when I was taking it, I had so much of an easier time doing the white with good, much to my dismay. We all might be prejudiced in ways we're not aware. So Mazarin Banaji of Yale and University yes, and Anthony Greenwald of the University of Washington created this test. What do you think this test reveals that perhaps we didn't know before? How fair are we being when we judge a person? Okay. Betsy, an events planner, had similar results. Left. Right, Once right, again, on the part left, of the test left, which associates left, black with good and white with bad, a white left, test taker left, flounders. Right. Well, I don't know. You hold it, to get, hold it together <laughs> almost to the end. Betsy's test shows a preference for white. There would be many people who would say, what's wrong with showing a preference for your own race? In some mm -hmm. contexts, it's actually illegal mm -hmm. uh, to do so uh, in employment contexts, in college admissions. Okay. But what does all this prove? Like the Why other participants, Jeff first took the test individually on a computer. And his test, too, revealed a preference for white. But he refused the subsequent one. studio test, saying test he doesn't think the experiment like reveals anything one. at all. I think the test for, the, for, for a person like myself 
who has some spatial difficulties and left-right difficulties is questionable. Professor Banaji, Jeff is questioning your test. Well, Jeff's experience is um, not unusual. Let's say you are having spatial difficulties, or let's say you've never used a computer before. It could easily have been the case that if that was the problem, that we could see a strong preference for black over white, but that didn't happen. In fact, this experiment has passed scientific scrutiny. And the results of the professor's experiments have been published in leading psychological journals. This test Our does results say reflect the professor's findings. Something like 79 or 80 percent of white Americans who take the test show a preference for white over black. And as revealing as those results are, the biggest surprise is yet to come. Left, left. Joan is a sales and marketing consultant. Even for many black test takers, the more challenging part of the test seems to be when black is associated with good and white with bad. Okay, didn't get halfway through. We'll start over. Okay. Uh huh. Ready? Set, After two go. attempts, she Left. still can't make right. it to the end. I've done it again. Even but so, Joan still thought she'd show a preference for her uniform. own race. Would you be surprised then, Joan, if I said that your test showed a slight preference for whites? Yes, I would be. Does it shock you? Yes. I... <laughs> You're flabbergasted. I'm flabbergasted. And Joan isn't alone. Dennis is the leader of a civil rights organization. According to his test in the studio, Dennis is neutral. But his individual computer test showed a preference for white. His response? All we had in images were white uh, through the type of media outlets that we were exposed to during my age generation. Uh, and that was a constant reinforcement over and over again. Of the African Americans the professors have tested, 42% show a preference for whites. A large number, especially when you consider that only 17% of whites show a preference for blacks. Go. Left. Right. And what of the other right, African Americans left, we tested? Right, Heather left, is an assistant district left, attorney. Right. On the part of the test where the black face is paired with the word bad, right, Heather has noticeable left, difficulty and can't finish. She showed a strong preference for African Americans, and her pride was unabashed. This made me feel more comfortable knowing that I've embraced my culture. Left. Randolph, left, a high school right, music teacher, right, also left, showed a preference left, for his own right. race. Does it concern you at all that you have a strong preference for African Americans? Does that score mean that I do not like European Americans? No. Is my subconscious aware of the condition that uh, African Americans are in in this country at this particular point? My conscious is. According to the research, 48% of African Americans have a preference for their own race. That's exactly what it comes out as, a strong preference oh, for blacks, good. and it doesn't The surprise. professors note that there's a difference exactly. in reactions between blacks me. and whites when they find you, out they have a preference for their own me. race. Of course it bothers me, but You I could say it it's pride reality. or prejudice. What blacks consider a badge of healthy self-esteem, many whites regard as an embarrassing revelation. When I did poorly on the, the, the black being good, is it because I can't come to say that I'm bad? And is it just in our nature that there has to be an us and a them? And them is going to be the bad guy. The professors say this test also reveals something else, something more subtle but equally important, that even unconscious racial biases may affect your behavior. For instance, do white teachers unconsciously favor white students? Right, left, Jennifer left, teaches sixth left, grade. Right. Oh. <laughs> Jennifer, your score came out as a strong preference for white. Do you believe that those unconscious attitudes for whites affects your teaching? I would hope not. I don't view people by what they look like. I view people on what they can do and what they feel and how they are. And Jennifer says she consciously classroom. strives to treat students equally. But psychologists say all teachers should be aware that hidden biases can still seep through. And teachers aren't alone. What happens when a police officer has an unconscious bias against a citizen? If a police officer is going to shoot two-tenths of a second faster uh, at an African-American than a European-American, well, that could be a matter of life and death.
These aren't just words and faces on a screen, not just abstract images. This test suggests that when it comes to the potent question of race, our subconscious is making decisions every day, decisions that in real time, in real life, have real consequences.